Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Tales of Heroes number 35, German Supreme versus Nubian. Nubian. <laughs> Nubian, that's right. Nubian. Nubian versus German Supreme here on Angleville. We've had both these players on the show before, but they've never faced each other. We've also had German Supreme on twice, but both sides he was playing as Axis. So this is going to be a very interesting show here today. I am, as always, your, uh, your allied shoutcaster, Bridger, from the Team Sports Gas Network. And we are here on Angaville with my, uh, uh, what was it this week, flauntingly original co-host, Vittensby. Again, welcome to the program. It's always great to be here. I guess that's my new uh, tag tagline, or it's always been the tagline that I used to open up the show. But uh, for myself, uh, this is a match between uh, German Supreme and Nuvion, like uh, Bridger had mentioned. And they're in a clan that German Supreme is the leader of called Reborn, which is, uh, I think, a really cool clan tag, uh, personally, to put at the end of your name. Um, Not anyways, quite as cool was- as Laid, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hosted that. That's uh, led by Daglo Ninja, who we had on the show not too too long ago, and his shoutcasting buddy over on Game Replays, uh, Dave. I think they're like the top two guys in in that clan. And, uh, I actually invited them to to play a match uh, for the show, uh, Reborn versus um, versus Laid. <laughs> Life above internet dorkiness, I think is what that stands for. So, uh, yeah, when whenever I think they were going to play it later in the month and then uh, get us the best replay, they had set up like six one v ones, a couple two v twos, and even oh, that's a three cool. v three. So, hopefully, we'll be able to bring you that, guys that match. But um, this was something that we actually picked up on GameReplays.org. I this heard match, it was, particularly, you mean? I heard it was a really good. Uh, Really, really good match. It was pretty solid. It was pretty long. I know everyone likes long, you know, well, hard-fought replays that go through all the tiers and the whole tech tree. So I thought this was a good, good selection. We don't really go to game replays that often. I think we won only one of our uh, video replays reviews have been taken off of game. At least game originally. Replays taken off yeah, of there. So we apologize originally. We apologize for anybody who's seen this already, but we're going to try and add our own unique spin to it so that it's not completely uh, a worthless wash uh, for you guys. And I know a lot of people have been saying, you know, I don't care if I've seen it before. I'd rather see, you know, a really great replay between two really good players, uh, you know, most of the time rather than, you know, just picking one out of the hat, you know, because we didn't have uh, a whole lot of time to, uh, to we, we tried to organize a specific one, but it didn't work out, unfortunately, this week. So we got this one on, and it was, uh, like we said, supposedly amazingly awesome so we're going to see that in about five seconds it's paused at the five second mark we are watching uh, german supreme on the allied side nuvian on the axis side will be Vittensby's target here we go uh, unpausing in five four three two one unpause and there we go so we'll see exactly uh how the different players uh play and i thought it would be good to mention that we had noah stacy one of the artists for uh, for a company of heroes from Relic on our audio show this week. It was a really good interview. I highly suggest you guys check it out. And one of the things he mentioned is that you can see his face as an Easter egg inside of the uh, supply depot. So if that happens, um, we're going to try and uh, and get that to happen. Uh, or if the supply depot comes up, we're going to try and catch it. So... Why? Uh, there's a little bit of uh, in-game banter going on between the two players. I know yeah. that um, w- when I was doing the whole MSY thing uh, before the whole team just decided to leave and probably going to start something else up. But uh, anyways, uh, it, the worst thing that could happen is you get matched up with a clan mate, you know, especially when you know, <laughs> you're like the really good players and you're like, oh, Christ, you know, now now we got to duke it out and we're supposed to be on the same you know, team here. So I can understand this little lighthearted banter that's going on between the, uh, the two sides. But interesting enough to note, um, I don't remember who kind of initiated this strategy, but you'll notice that there's only a one pioneer and one engineer start. They don't build an extra one. And this is uh, works particularly well on uh, Angaville, and this was something I think uh, Dunkem might have been his name. If I'm giving credit to the wrong person, I apologize. But uh, he kind of initiated this strategy. It was started out as kind of an Axis thing, so you'd have two Volks versus their first rifleman, or you know, rifleman and Jeep early on. Um, now the Allies sometimes tend to to do the same thing, and now it's like a double double start with just the original. Uh, original pioneer 
That's very interesting because, you know, for the longest time it shifted. You know, first it was, you know, you build one Pioneer, then it was, oh, yeah, you got to build two Pioneers. That gives you the extra capping power early. And then it's, it's sort of shifted back to one extra, and now it's back to, it's now actually down to zero. So that's kind of interesting. Um, both sides, we've got uh, a Jeep and Rifles versus Volks. Two double Volks actually start here. Um, and both sides actually, actually the axe is going straight for the munitions early, allies going straight for the fuel, which is kind of what you'd expect for the two different sides, considering how they work in terms of their tech trees. The allies are more fuel dependent, axis are more munitions dependent, and it looks like this jeep might be in trouble if it drives right into the bike's line of fire. It's got enough HP, it can probably get out of there now that it's on the road. He doesn't have to micro too hard to keep that thing alive. Yep. Uh, one thing I heard was in the first few minutes of the game, there were just light skirmishes and that both uh, players had played rather defensively, which kind of happens in matches like this because, you know, the the uh, Ingeville curse is, you know, you lose your first squad or, you know, that first battle doesn't go in your favor and then you get your strap point cut off and you're pretty much screwed and the game's over in 10 minutes. So I can understand playing it a little bit uh, less... Uh, Less passive. Now Nubian's mentioning about the the one ng strat, and uh, I think that uh, well, it's interesting that they both decided to do that. I don't know if that's something that Reborn uh, Clan kind of does standard now, but uh, German Supreme doesn't really know what he's talking about. <laughs> so he's probably just trying to throw 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 Nubian off there. But st standard opening would be a two Volks opening with that, as far as what I've been been hearing. I haven't had time to experiment with it, but certainly I can see how it would be powerful for the Axis player, because they always seem to have lose that first battle unless you, and you're always running your first Volks waiting for that MG to come up, and you know, so... Uh, Interestingly, yep. they're, they're, they've got pretty much the same capping priority so far. The uh, Both sides have gone for the entire left or the entire right to the exclusion of those two points right next to their base, and now they're just getting to the point where they're ready to capture those. That bike might be in trouble. It's doing that special thing that the bike can do, which is back up and shoot at the same time. But even so... Uh, I'm sorry, the Jeep is doing the backing up, and, and, the, and now he's got an, an, uh, uh, an engineer squad there, so he's going to be able to take care of business with the with the jeep he's got very nice positioning actually on the garrisoning of uh, the riflemen because uh, it's really difficult to take out a rifle squad that's garrisoned in a building like that if it has an additional rifle squad that can help to cover it because you know if you try and run around the building the other rifle squad is going to tear you to pieces because you're not going to be able to kill things fast enough but if you ignore the squad in the building that squad is going to tear you to pieces so he, he put a, a squad in each building and was able to force uh, Nuvian to back off and so they're really polarized right now stuck at each of their <laughs> corresponding sides however the allies obviously have a much stronger position in that they control two victory points and they are now about 40 points ahead in terms of victory points now let's see what each side is doing we've got a weapon support center for the allies coming up first um, are the axis teching right now I'm trying to see I don't see any teching going on as far as I can tell oh the lights blinking so it is teching and did we lose Vittensby there hello hello I right, may or may not have lost Vittensby He's still connected, but we'll see how it goes. Um, just following 50 points up now. So that ticker's slowly ticking away. Allies are getting the advantage. We've got a mortar coming up first. That's sort of a very interesting topic that you'd see right away. And a machine gun for the Axis might be setting up somewhere in the cover of those bushes. Oh, no, it moved out of light cover, unfortunately, when it actually set up. And now it's going to be stuck, potentially shooting at that at that building. Probably he'll be able to turn it because it's not garrisoned. We'll see. Vinsby still AFK. Not exactly sure what's wrong with that. We're going to try and give him another call. See if we can get him back here on Skype for us. Machine guns chittering away. And again, the allies, at the at the farthest distance you can possibly get, inside of a stone building, barely taking any damage from that machine gun. And, you know, actually the machine gun's now getting countered from close range with a jeep, and so they're saying it's time to get out of here. There's the Kriegs barracks coming up right now. Mortar's probably going to be starting to 
throw some shots now. There it is. I don't know where that one's going to land. Probably where the machine gun was. Or somewhere close to it. There we go. We've got Vittensby back, but apparently his mic is not working. So we're going to pause it and find out exactly what's going on. So stay tuned right here. We're going to get a quick bit of technical fixing, and then we'll be back onto the show. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, paused at 7 minutes and 11 seconds. Sorry about that. We should be able to get right back into the game here. Vinsby's back on with us. We had a small problem. Apparently, the, uh, the, f the free French were trying to break into his study. I don't know why. I mean, it's really weird because uh, last time it was the Germans. This time it's the free French. I mean, I don't understand. Both sides are trying to kill us here, Vinsby. This is ridiculous. But anyway, if you want an explanation, listen to this week's audio show. It was really fantastic. Moving on. At the 7 minute and 11 second mark, we are unpausing in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Unpause. There we go. So we're going to move on here and see how things turn out. We've got a mortar actually set up on the uh, allied side. Going to try and uh, do some damage to the Axis uh, long range. So we'll see how that turns out for him. This is actually a pretty good map for mortars in this sort of a situation where everything's locked down because those hedges provide a very good defense, whereas if the ally, if the Axis wants to get to your mortar team, they really have to go all the way around. So you can put a jeep, you know, nearby those hedges, they can see far into the other side's territory and just start dropping mortars on, which is what they're going to try and do now. It's set up, and unfortunately, sometimes if you put it too close to the hedge, it'll actually hit the hedge and not do anything, but I think that one made it. We've got another mortar team now, because we've got a Kriegsbarracks on the Axis side here, so it's going to be a little bit of an artillery war on both sides here. Yep, and uh, Nubian's assigned to place his machine gun in a pretty, pretty solid position. Uh, hopefully he won't get mortared back. Uh, German Supreme is forced to retreat. He also has an unbuilt uh, mine there, uh, kind of on the center road. Um, the thing about mine placement is if you place um, the two, there's three, I've said this before, but the three mines, like within the three individual mines within the greater mine, um, and wow, they just got uh, slaughtered on the right. Nubian loses his squad. Uh, place the mines in the direction to you his think own they're mortar. Come. Or no, uh, yeah, to his own mortar. Looks like. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, that's sorry. A bad time to talk about it. But uh, the two smaller mines face it in the direction, like in this particular situation, towards the you know middle road of Angeville, because it'll do more damage that way than uh, just having the you know the lone mine at that particular angle. So. Not the best placement of mines uh, by Nubian. Certainly that battle did not really work out in his favor. He did seem to be uh, trying to micro the mine placement during the middle of a battle, so I guess you got to give him a little bit of uh, leniency <laughs> for that. Yep. And the flamethrower down south uh, is going to finish off that retreating MG, but wasn't quite able to do it. Oh, I didn't actually see that part. I was looking up in the north here. It looks like... Uh, the northern allied garrison building there is getting mortared and that's gonna be uh, pretty effective I should think at destroying that area there's a nice one landed right on the roof and you gotta love the procedural damage to these buildings you see there you had the first you know the roof gets hit and now there's a big hole blown in it the bottom left window gets hit and stuff falls out of it so that's probably pretty dang cool so we'll see We've got an assault going on on the left-hand side here while I'm just jabbering away at the cool physics of the game. And we've got actually one squad pin, which is allowing uh, the other side trying to get around, but it's not going to work. There's a long shot with the Panzer Shrek. Does nothing. Again, we've got mortars for the allied side. We still have... Let me see. Did he lose one of the mortars, or am I just missing it? He did lose one of the mortars in that little engagement kind of by the break in the hedge by a German Supreme's base. Oh, and really? uh, also we have a sniper Where's on the that? field uh, in the middle, in the mid midfield, shall we say, as well as the mortar now uh, taking care of the rifles in that uh, building that some say is uh, pretty overpowered, um, especially if allies get a rifle squad in there. Uh, it's, it's extremely hard to, to kill anything inside there. And here comes a jeep, takes a shot by Panzer Shrek, goes down to about 5% five, five health. That's uh, not good, but at least there's an engineer squad right around there. We also have the first uh, machine gun coming up. I'd expect him to place it probably in that building that's uh, that right, the one he's going into right there, that, kind of on the left, and uh, that, that kind of locks down uh, a little bit. Better so is Axis, but that uh, main road, that little crossway in the middle of Angerville. It's a huge battle going up in the north. Oh, and a machine gun's going to suppress everything the Allies have over there if it 
gets off the cut, cut. There it is. Everything gets suppressed. Two, one, unpaused. All right, so we've got the allies pinned here, and it's certainly a failed assault in this case. A, grenade, a nice... grenade going off. Ouch! Ouch! <laughs> Ticked off the entire border, and the German Supreme is forced to retreat. Remember back in the day when those things didn't work? Har, 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 those were the days. Yeah. All right. And uh, Nuvion just ran over the mine that was kind of laid in yeah, the middle Yeah, did he? Road. He moved his machine gun all the way up there and lost it to the mine. Ouch! And a second yep. machine gun must have been down there firing at him. That was very nice enfilade fire by uh, the second machine gun, and <laughs> the Jeep's just backing away. <laughs> oh my god, how did I get out of that alive? <laughs> Holy crap. All right, so let's see. We've got a mass amount of riflemen getting ready to turn around and counterattack. The entire right side is open now to being attacked. I don't know if Nuvian realizes this. And he barely got his jeep uh, out alive on the left. Uh, Nuvian doesn't really have much to, to cap with at this point. Um, he lost that early engagement. Now German Supreme obviously was the... Uh, was the was the loser of that battle? Okay, we have the supply yard going up. I know you wanted to see if you can zoom in and see if Noah's face is in there. Let's see. Supposedly in the ground or something. If you look probably between has the to barrels, be, probably has to be built first. But yeah, I guess. It's supposedly I, I, a lot more visible when uh, when it's destroyed. The supply yard is ready to go. Oh, I can read something on the barrels, but uh, my computer runs at uh, extra low settings, so uh, probably going to have to be on yours. Uh, we have a bunker. In the meantime, we have a bunker going up. Uh, some people prefer to... We had a discussion about bunkers in the audio uh, show that you guys can go ahead and check out. Um, upgrading to a medic bunker right now and he's repositioning his mortar he's got a good defensive line uh, he seems pretty content just holding right. just holding the line were you able to find it no I didn't see it it's probably a lot easier to see when it's destroyed but right now I couldn't find it so here we go uh, we've got a machine gun in the building there but it's getting mortared another getting finally sniped, a good actually. use of the allied mortar Killed sniped it! Sniped and mortar. Sniped and mortar. I didn't even see we got a sniper. Where's the allied? There's yep. the allied sniper. Sorry. Uh, Axis sniper somewhere around here, unless they got counter sniped while I was busy. Nope, there it is. So, uh, allies doing a nice counter attack. Actually, never lost their victory points. So, at 322, the allies are up almost 200 VPs right now. And that's, in a, that's a very good position to be in going into the next tier. I assume we're going to be seeing a motor pool or a tank depot coming up here soon. The allied player has 195 fuel, so it looks like a, mo uh, a tank depot is probably going to be coming up soon. Um, we've actually yeah. got rangers uh, ready to be called in. So, oh, nice mortar destroys the allied mortar squad there, the American mortar squad. We've got rangers able to be called in. No rangers in the field yet, but that's uh, we've got an infantry company is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, Nuvion's also just selected Defense Doctrine, and he he's very low on munitions. I'm assuming the Grenadier Grenade and then also the Panzer Shrek upgrade. Two uh, Panzer Shrek upgrades, at least two that I can see, as well as the Medic Bunker uh, uh -huh, upgrade. It's pretty much completely, uh, completely drained his munitions, as well as the two mines, I should say. So uh, he's running a little low on that. We probably won't uh -oh, see much uh -oh, uh -oh. of the Fallen action oh, that right mine isn't now. Placed, or I, I guess. Might be wrong. But Thought let's that see mine how. was gonna blow up, but I guess it's not placed. Um, sniper, yeah, wasn't finished. machine gun, pineapple, booyah! See ya. Wouldn't wanna be ya. And actually, uh, that was the American sniper. No, that's the Axis sniper. Oh, that was the American sniper. Just got counter sniped, I believe. Unless I'm totally nope. Never mind. I am. I'm totally full of it. Um, but we do see the jeep trying to get in here to reveal that sniper. He knows it's over here somewhere. He's got it. He's got it revealed. Is he going to be able to move his sniper in in time? No, the Jeep's just going to be able to chase it. Oh, no, a damaged engine means it's not going to be able to chase it. That sniper's going to get out of there alive. That was unlucky Question for is, will that Jeep German get out Supreme. There? Nope. Um, nope, didn't. You, one thing to note is that uh, Nuvion is reinforcing out his bunker, and that's the excellent usage of oh, yeah. you know, the early defense doctrine, fortify their perimeter ability. Uh, his AT gun's kind of in a weird position. I think that if something's going to be approaching it, 
from kind of like the upper right hand angle, so to speak. He might actually be shooting his bunker in the rear. Yeah, that would be um, bad. So, and he's just got a free squad of grenadiers, so that yeah. bunker's already paid for itself. And he just got the ability to build the Flak 88, so we might see some of wow, that. Wow, that's game. a lot of CPs here. I don't know. Uh, we must have, for Rangers, we must have spent three. He might have the ability to, for infantry to build. I can't tell if the infantry can build defenses, but that means the Allied players must be really far behind in uh, in CPs. Well, actually, we've got about five CPs right here on the Allied side. How much does it take to get to a Flak? Is it six, I think? Five, five CPs. Oh, really? It's only five, so they're about even. One, then. two, three. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure why Nubion didn't just take the small advantage he had and cut off the strap point. Um, that's one point of contention I'd bring up right now. Um, another grenadier grenade. Fairly not effective. very effective, but not perfect, not well placed either. Uh, looks like this rifleman might be going in to, to pick up that mortar, but uh, to s Hopefully he doesn't do it with. Well, he only has the option to do it with the triple, with the double veterancy uh, rifle squad. So yeah. we'll see if he decides to do that. Uh, we have a croc coming out, and some painful memories of 1.5 are running through my mind right now. <laughs> but, we'll see. Uh, we do have a uh, cloaked AT gun and at least three Panzer Shreks here, if I uh, remember correctly. So let's look at it from the Allies' point of view. We've got the croc completely frying, completely having destroyed. I don't. Oh, that, that's good. That he's uh, keeping at maximum range uh, with his croc. A lot of people like to just, I'm gonna run through Angaville with my croc and just killing, you know, everything. Which I guess in the past worked, but what Ooh, the hell? That I was a mine. Ordered... A mine, I think, triggered by the engineers, destroyed oh, yeah, okay. the the croc's engine. Okay, I was wondering, I was like, wow, first shot, damage engine, nice. <laughs> but, uh... Sniper now trying to pick off the Grenadier squad with very few people left in it, but Double he's in veterancy trouble. sniper as well, so that thing, Ooh, uh, wow, level yeah. two, he can move uh, extra fast, and I think he doesn't have quite as long of a reload time, although they'll quote me on the reload time thing. And he is shooting his bunker in the rear, just like I thought that he would do. Oh, yeah? It's just one shot, but still, I mean... Now that's he's a, that's a mortar he's... hit or a Sherman shot right there. Wow, so we got a he... Flak 88 built in the backfield. Nice. So, uh, luckily he's still got the croc, and he's going to be able to repair that and use it, but uh, right now he needs something else to... Actually, he doesn't need anything else. He can just dig his heels in on the right-hand side and try and hold on to it. I think the problem is uh, uh, Nuvians being a little bit too complacent in just, you know being like, okay, well, I got the left side. You know, the, the right side's completely undefended right now, and he doesn't necessarily know that. It might be wise to send... Uh, does he have his sniper still? Somewhere? No, he lost He lost sniper. it. Did it get countersniped? I didn't see. I'm just... I'm pretty sure he just got killed by the hordes of, ah. hordes of riflemen, but uh, we do have one ranger squad on the field. I'm yep. on the Axis perspective, but uh, I'm just assuming that, you know, German Supreme probably has Thompsons on it, and it looks like he's preparing for a pretty yep. big assault uh, right now. We're here to clean oh. up this damn bloody mess. I hear howitzers going off on the medic bunker. German Supreme just scouted with his sniper on the left side. Ah, yep. And he's got his sniper safely out of the way that he's able to snipe that machine gun while all the carnage is going on, but... Well adept, Nuvian managed to uh, see that that was happening. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. German Supreme does see the, the Grenadiers headed towards the sniper. He backs it off in time. But wow, that bunker got really lucky to be able to su su survive that with like 10% health. And Nuvion just got a motorbike to counter the sniper. Let's see if he's going to take it out. It's been discovered on the left. There Sacrifice it that bike and just kill it. It's... No. Oh, oh my god. Oh, my god. <laughs> I can't believe he, he must just not clicked enough or not been paying attention. He must have just clicked it up there and it just saw it, but he didn't actually... Wow. Yeah, that's a classic Company Heroes last second escape with like 2% health. That was crucial because the double vet sniper, you know, and probably pretty close to triple veterans. Now, now he needs a triage center badly. It would really be yeah. worth a triage center for all the wounded squads he'll have of rifle of rangers and riflemen. <laughs> this is going to be a pretty big engagement when it happens. Uh, we got the croc kind of doing the little feeler. Oh, engine damage! Oh man, that thing's going to be pwned. Ouch! Five, 
Wow! Oh, let's see it. Overpowered! <laughs> you see how fast that croc died? That was like five seconds, guys. Nothing should be able to die that fast. Alright, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, obviously I it was know. getting shot at by like seven things, so it should yeah, die Yeah, seven Panzer Shreks and the uh, Flak 88 and an AT gun. Yeah. I would hope that it would take it down. unless a and If it didn't, uh, Axis definitely needs a buff. Yeah, so, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if the crocs still stream through all that and goes, Hello, I'm still here! That would be trouble. Uh -oh. How many Panzer Shreks is that? Well, another howitzer. Another howitzer. See, the thing about dropping Ouch, howitzers... Ouch! There goes one shot at a machine gun nest. Sorry. The thing that, about dropping howitzers on bunkers is, I can understand his thinking is, oh, there's probably massive grenadiers around there, but it's not. And here comes a crucial battle with, uh, with For the Fatherland on. Who's going to win, Bridger? Take I don't back. know. For the Fatherland or fire up? Here comes a nice grenade. Pineapple managed to do uh, a lot of damage. How come For the Fatherland isn't on all the other units? It also, now it's on them, like it wasn't a couple of seconds ago. Wow. Did you see that? Um, it's still on them. I no, it was it. it was only... I Maybe it's just a screw-up on my side. I only saw For the Fatherland on one squad that was, like, farther south than the other ones. And when they retreated and they passed a certain line, they all got it. I don't know if that was just a graphical bug or something on my side. I think it was a graphical bug because it looked fine to me. Uh, what do we have going on here? Free Grenadier Squad just popped out at right before he <laughs> lost his bunker. Wow, that was kind of nice. Looks like he's going to lose his flak. Man, that sniper is so close to getting killed, but also so close to level 3 veterancy. Yeah. And those Thompsons are just chewing everything up. There's level 3 for the sniper. Ouch! That's going to be painful. I don't remember exactly what it is at level 3. I think it gets more health or something? I know the a <laughs> fucking I know the Axis uh, gets a you know, sniper that a, shoots twice. That's a reasonable complaint, except for the fact that Nuvion, you just got pwned by Rangers! <laughs> Sorry. I guess right. there's that. Uh, I, like, I like the guy. I like German Supreme. Been a long-time friend. That's like, Since early retail. And that's the other thing. I just thought... Pretty cool, too. You get a Tiger. It's like, if you lose a Tiger, you lose a Tiger. If you lose a Flak 88, it's going to be used against you. <laughs> it's like, dang it. That was the worst investment ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just thinking about it, you know, what's missing here, and I was like, oh, yeah, what, is, what does Vittens be bitch about every single replay? No veterancy. Did he kill the Sniper? I think he killed the Sniper. I think he did, too. But uh, here comes a grenadier grenade on the flak. And he got it Ooh, back. Yeah, he got it. Yeah. Unprotected flaks are just that easy to kill with infantry. And it has tons of health, too. Yeah. Because wow, it, it was an infantry just... assault. It didn't get attacked by tanks. You've only just. Well, I thought the bazookas the... would have done maybe ah. a little bit of damage, but uh, well, it seems like. <laughs> you must not have been thinking about Company of Heroes bazookas then. Yeah. There they go. And Rangers are not faring too well against, like, three squads of Grenadiers here. Yep, without Rifleman support. Uh, They're definitely so going to have to back he'll, off. Hopefully he'll pick up that uh, bazooka that was dropped with the, either the Rifle Squad that's there or the Ranger Squad that's getting pretty much torn apart right now. I don't know why that he's even bothering to stay in this fight. Oh, he's got a tank over there. And he destroyed oh it! Wow! God. I didn't even see that was happening! The hell? The tank must have been like shooting at it for a too. while. Just one shot at it. I don't think he one shot it. I think he must have been shooting at it for a while. Unless he yeah, just maybe. did. He really just come in there? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I don't know. A little bit of veterancy, maybe. Um, right now we have a Panzer IV coming out. So ooh, ninja capping the uh, victory point though with a single grenadier squad. He's going to try and hold it off. <laughs> Down by four hundred points. One hundred to go. I love the go. one man armies though. So many. I took this screenshot. I was playing on Saint Hilaire, and I had like five or six squads of Paris with one man in it at like five percent health or something like that. And it's just just a little, little touches about this game that always give me a kick. Like you know that one soldier can actually make a difference in COH. So. Enemy unit down. All right. So let's see. They're taking back that one. We've got a mass of grenadiers here. I see moving on the left. Let's follow them and see what happens. If you were the Allied commander, you wouldn't know that this was coming until... No, you still wouldn't know it was coming because they keep moving away. Uh, but that tank <laughs> driving right through the middle. Oh, no, there's another grenade! No, there's no mine. Um, yeah, I can count. Okay. So, let's see. The Allies have control of most of the map. 
and the Axis hardly have any income right now. What kind of uh, munition fuel situation do we have for totals right now for the Axis? Well, for Nubion, we have 99, almost a round number, and now we have 100, a very round number. Um, 100 munitions with plus 10 income and 168 fuel. So he does have enough for a Panther if he wanted to, but his fuel income is plus 10, so we might see a Panther. Um, I would expect some Panzer IVs to follow it up, considering he does have a Panzer IV. Alright, let's see if he's going to run over the Rangers. He's trying. Now he's stopped. And he's he's in a good situation here, I think. The uh... Uh -oh, oh, now he's not. Uh-oh. Ran the... over two of them. Bridger, are you screaming now? No, I'm not screaming Panzer because look at this. We've got, we've got bazookas taking down the Panzer IV very well. Got a main gun destroyed. But now he's probably going to pull this Sherman right into a mass of Panzer Shreks, is my best guess here. Yeah, he's hoping yeah. to kill it with the bazooka, but he's not going to be able to get close enough. That was very nice micro to get the Panzer IV out of the way in time. Yep, he's got nothing to repair, uh -oh. it, so he's really got to be careful. On map howitzer, where are they going, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Where are they going? Shots? Probably on the Panzer Command in his base. Yeah, it looks like it's going directly across. Let's see. Where they fall. Enemy unit down. There they are, right in the base. Nubian's going WTF. We have it's a falling on the bunker. Panther rolling out right now. Nope. That's, it's that's just a big circle. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh! Miss on the Panzer IV! Sherman's pursuit. Oh, nice shot by the single Grenadier left! Kills the Sherman, and what happened? The Sherman shot the Panzer IV before yeah. the Sherman died. I can't believe it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was amazing. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I can't believe he made the Panzer IV survive, killed the Sherman first. Nope, out of control, it still manages to get a shot off. <laughs> I think we've seen that like once before. Yeah, stuff like that's always funny, especially when in like 1.4 or 1.5 with the the croc, you took it out and then it would still kill your AT gun or something, you know, yeah. as it's dead with its flame. So, but uh, yeah, that was that's a classic moment right there. Wow, we'll see what he can firing again. This howitzer. I didn't think. We'll see what he can do with this panther. Uh, he's got one grenadier, two grenadier squads, a panther and a capping pioneer. So, this is going to be. Uh, some crucial moments right now, and plus his VPs are pretty much going down to nothing. And uh, Bazooka's actually did a bit of damage there. Now he's uh, firing up, and ouch! Actually, look at those body parts, Rain. That was a very nice watch, shot. Watch for the a Panther. Panther micro to try to take out the uh, to run over the uh, Rangers. I see that. For a second, he's there. trying. He's forcing him to run away. If these Rangers take out that Panther, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> they might. <laughs> This is why bazookas are overpowered. I wish the panzer was just more powerful at killing infantry. It always makes me so angry. It's like if I ever get a panther, I, I must have double veterancy because otherwise I just get so angry <laughs> just watching it miss over and over again. As yeah. uh, we can see here, it got one really nice shot earlier. There it got a really good shot, but barely any splash damage. It killed like one guy. A panzer four that would have killed at least two guys and damaged a lot of the squad members. Um, interestingly, I mean, he's facing mostly infantry, uh, Nuvian is, and I really expected to see some LMG-42s on at least one of these Grenadier squads, but so far, you know, he hasn't had anything to take out these riflemen except that Panzer IV. Uh, Ranger grenade uh, completely misses. Nuvian seems to be pretty, uh, Nian, I'm sure what's going through his mind right Look now is, is wow, territory. I'm really down to... Yeah, 36. Like 36, so... Got to be careful. Meanwhile, we've lost the Kriegs barracks to that howitzer barrage. We have a uh, Ostwin popping out. Interesting combination. So we're gonna. Looks like all he needs to build is a Knight's Crossholders, and we got all of Deer Four in this game. Panthers now at less than half health. Damaged engine from a bazooka. Uh oh. Uh oh. Sherman could come and finish it off now, but the Sherman's dead. That's right. M10 is what I meant. Look at how much health it's lost to that bazooka squad over there. M10's gonna take it on from the front. Main gun destroyed. That's it for the Panther, ladies and gentlemen. It's lights out. I can't believe it. Bazookas taking down a Panther for all intents and purposes. It's gone. It's out of control. How could you let that happen, Nuvian?
Really. That's... ouch. Ouch. That happens. But the more important thing is, well, besides the fact that he lost his panther, is that, well, we have an M10 tank destroyer on the field, and, uh, and, and registered artillery bridger, don't uh -oh. miss it. I see it. It's coming. Ouch! The ranger squad! Obliterated! One guy left! Doesn't even make it out! I can't believe it. That's really crazy. <laughs> the, the, the last little burst yep. killed the guy. And look nice. at that! Wow! Four Intense, Panzer Shreks insta, insta kill! Wow! But here comes all the rangers! Like, ah, I can get you too! Let's see, he's still got lots of munitions. He could call the registered artillery down again. If he can... Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Bazookas would actually do pretty well against an Oswind, I should think. Uh, yeah, there goes the first shot. Didn't penetrate. That one penetrated. It did good a bit of damage. But is it chewing him up? D uh, yeah, it seems he's retreated. I don't think he needed to retreat anything except for that one squad that had nobody left in it. But, uh... That was kind of interesting. I expected him to stay a little longer and be able to defeat that uh, Ostwind. I don't think he could have beat that Ostwind. Rangers are notoriously the suck against Ostwinds. Really? That seems but, odd. Uh, more I mean, if you look at his base, that Panzer Command, I mean, like you were mentioning, he already lost his Krieg Barracks. Both of his bunkers are at about 15% health. Wehrmacht took a little bit of damage, but that Panzer Command, if that goes down, there's no way he's going to be able to turn this around. And it's almost there. Yeah. So he's going to have to... And we got an on-map howitzer, I think. Uh, I don't think he even point. knows that Panzer Command is there, because I'm looking at Fog of War and he can't see it. So he yeah. hasn't mapped it out. He doesn't know where the Panzer Command is. Look He's at guessing. the uh, VP on the upper right-hand corner. Oh, no! Let's it's going back. It. Does he live? I think he lived. Wow, wow that was, so that was an, an off-map howitzer up there, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Ooh, Austin's and the Austin found it. Take out the He's attack troops. grounding it, but oh no, it's almost destroyed. Why are you stopping? Just kill the howitzer. Oh man, I would I think you should have sacrificed that Ostwin for kill a howitzer. Look at I how much health it, it's got left. It's got like 10% health. Oh, he did do it after all. Take it out. Very yeah. nice. Okay, so he knew what he was doing. I just Don't worry about me. Definitely Quite very close to uh, losing that Panzer command. That would have been in big trouble. Quite a change of events. Let's see if he can keep it together now. And uh, really, he needs to be taking that VP on the left side and cutting off the strap point at this point. Yeah, uh, cutting that strap point on the left would really help him. But he has yeah. barely anything to do it with. He's got a machine gun over here on the right. He's got a grenadier squad with one guy in it, an Ostwind, and it uh, looks like what must be two grenadier squads that aren't fully equipped. Unless that's a Volk squad that nice. also has Volk a squad uh, with Panzer dual Shrek. bazookas. Oh, bazookas! <laughs> wow, how worthless! <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But he really needs to take that strap point and then use his uh, defensive artillery, um, register artillery. Sorry, he does have rocket artillery, so maybe I think probably what's going through his mind right now is I need to save that rocket barrage for the opportune moment, kill everything, and then you know win the game because well placed rocket barrages can. You know, obviously do that so I uh, don't know if he'd be willing to take a gamble on a registered let's see uh, if he does want to take a gamble on a register this is this is kind of a crucial moment here he's firing up to uh, attack the machine gun uh oh uh oh nice. registered Lord artillery on top of his own machine gun he says I don't oh, care kill those rifles kill those rangers Ah, he did a bit of damage, but I don't think it was as much as he could have hoped for. Very nice, fast retreat good. by German Supreme. Yeah, and his entire force had to, I mean, retreat off of that. He really fired up, I think, a little bit too much. Uh, he only really needed to fire up one against that. But we do have two Ostwins uh, sitting, kind of camping a bit, uh, followed up with, with <laughs> folks with two bazookas. <laughs> Classic. Look, go pick up a third, guys. <laughs> no, I don't think you can actually pick up a third. No. How, so. Where did he lose all the Grenadier squads that he had before? I don't think I saw. I mean, he must have just been over time. Yeah. Oh, he's got two now. He's still got two Grenadier squads. He's got one over here, and he's got one coming up from uh, the base there with a the Panzer Shrek as well. I really would expect to see one of these guys. Uh, he probably wants to save the munitions for registered artillery, though. I was thinking I, I would really expect to see them... Uh, one of them with an LMG-42. 
Yeah, I would expect Nubion to be cutting off the uh, left-hand strap point. I mean, he knows that he has a tank depot out, and it's just a matter of time before he spams enough Shermans to overpower uh, Nubion. So, uh, and maybe set up a flak, but he's really running low on fuel at this point. Um, but definitely cut off that strap point. It's really going to be crucial. Yeah, he's not even got anything taking the plus 16 that he has control over on the right. Oddly yeah, enough. With the, with the Panzer Command out, you definitely need that. And we have Knight's Cross Holders coming out, so Nubion did choose to get the uh, full plethora, shall we say, of all the Tier 4 units. That's kind of cool. Those Knight's Cross are really deadly, too. Especially when they have veterancy, but, you know, that's a whole other ball game. It seems like this game, Nubion hasn't really played as aggressive as I've seen him play in other, other replays. Not entirely sure why, but he's, he's playing this a little bit more passive than I... I don't know, I play really aggressive allies, maybe that's just me, but uh, I think he's just not playing quite as aggressively with Axis as he should be. Uh, there's a couple key moments that I could probably point out. If he loses that barracks, which it looks like he's going to, that's the gonna... Wehrmacht? Uh, yeah, the yeah, Wehrmacht, that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be bad. That's always the risk of placing, uh, your Wehrmacht there. It's pretty, pretty open, but it's almost essential. Wow this map to, to really uh, place it there. He just barely was able to defend it there, but uh, does he even have any pioneers that might be able to repair the buildings in his base that are so close to death, much less his tanks? I haven't seen any pioneers in a long time. No, I don't think he, I don't think he ever really Ooh. could really afford it. Nice kill. He snuck that Ostwin back over there, but uh, unfortunately now he's going to have to run the gauntlet of... Uh, Rangers and an M10 and a Sherman. I think it's in big trouble. Unless he manages to really outrun it or outmaneuver, but uh, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Yeah, I got caught on a little incline over there. That's yeah, gone. Yeah, if he had been able to go speeding straight up this road up here and away, he might have been able to get away, but he Wait, got Bridger, caught. Wait, you're missing it. The other Austin's in his base. Oh, wow. Finishing off the double, double vet range. Oh, God. Oh, he's going to get it, too. Sherman. Oh, he put it inside! Is it gonna work? He can still kill it. Should be able to. Yep, he got it. So he just killed two Ranger Squad. That's a huge investment he managed to destroy, but it looks like he sacrificed both his Ostwins to do it. So I don't know if that's a great trade. German Supreme doesn't really have any, uh... Doesn't really have any capping power right now, whereas Nubion has a lot of capping power, yeah. so... And he's kind of just kind of sitting there. I mean... I don't know. I have to ask him why he didn't just decap that strap point because, as you can see, or we the have plus sixteen, two Shermans and probably another Sherman coming out. I don't know how he can how he can counter it and fuel. I mean, how much fuel does he have right now? One hundred and sixty-five, uh, yeah, so and he's got plus twenty-six at least income. Kill the fuel income. If not yeah. the plus five by his base, at least everything on the left side. Um, plus, that's like uh, the 16 munitions, you know, I mean, isn't linked for, for Nubion either, so, um, yeah, but he, when you get down to this little VPs, you can't, you, you may, I don't know, I'd say you make mistakes like that. You really have to play different. Oh, that's right. That's right. He he can't afford to move guys back because if he loses in a if he loses a battle up here and that VP gets taken, then he's pretty much done. So that's I guess he has to play really defensively up at the top here. Uh, but that other Sherman that came up got down to about 10% in like the first volley. So he's really stuck until he gets some real good infantry capping power or infantry killing power because uh, none of these things are being repaired. Yeah, I would expect tanks. to see a bunker being built. Uh, he's got a pioneer squad coming up finally. Uh, hopefully he can reinforce and he won't have to retreat. Here comes another volley from the Panzer Shreks. Uh-oh! Pop into existence. We're building an 88. Probably not the best time. He probably had uh, been starting to build that earlier, but... I think he's trying to lure him in. So if the Sherman takes a shot at it, he gets his resources back. Yeah. And then he'll probably have to come within range to die to uh, <laughs> two squads of Volks with four bazookas. Yeah. I think that was actually a really good investment now that you think about it. The 88, because everything that the Allies have is in armor right now. He's got one squad of Rangers. So, you know, the mass amount of infantry plus this 88 is really going to hurt 
anybody coming up uh, to attack this right side. Plus, the Knight's Cross will be able to eliminate anything. And there's a machine gun in that building, too, no less. So, I mean, that's really... Putting that 88 there is a fantastically clever move, I think. Definitely. But if he gets a fourth Sherman out, holy crap. I don't, I don't know if he'll be able to counter that. Um, he could potentially use a rocket barrage, but right now he's just short of the munitions for it. So, um, might have oh, been... Oh, man. It might have been interesting if he would have went in uh, with his Ostwin back uh, a little while ago, and I'm not sure if he had the rocket barrage then, but I think he did, and just you know sacked the tank depot. Might have been able to actually take out the weapon support center, although it probably doesn't make a difference. But at least take out the tank depot. It's really a. Uh oh, is that an off-map howitzer? I think it is. Yeah, All it his is. guys are running into it. Oh no, he doesn't notice. There it goes. Really hurt that Volk squad. Everything else is going to get out of there, but that 88's already lost its crew. That was a good game, but now he's got to reman it with one of his squads that is very important because it has all the. Uh, he's going to have to throw his pioneers at it or something because all his Volk squads are either dead or they have bazookas and Panzerschrecks, which he wants to hold on to. See that? He's not able to repair it. And there it goes. We do have a, a bunker going up, so up, and it's gone. So he's not going to be able to reman that. Yeah. But uh, how is he going to survive four Shermans? I think fourth Shermans on the way in an M10. I don't know. He's going to have to get some really lucky shots killing those Shermans early. You know, like this one. If he manages to kill this one before he gets a chance to go back, he'll have a chance. But let's see how it unfolds. He probably could get very lucky with some registered or rocket artillery. I think that's going to be the only way that, like you talked about, that he's going to be able to do anything. Um, very, very lucky, you know. <laughs> I mean, it would take some horrible pathing for that to take out. I mean, now he's got four Shermans, but is he going to build a fifth one? I mean, cutting off, not cutting off that strap point and using a registered artillery here and there has been crucial. Also, the lack of for the fatherland usage in this game. I can understand um, that 45 munitions is a lot to use, but really, I mean... And look, there he was still a hasn't picked up the fuel there. over here. Like, he might need it at some point, you know? Yeah. Well, he definitely could use a, you know, a panther. Yeah. But, uh... I don't know if... Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is, uh... Speaking of horrible pathing, there we go. I think the Armada's about to come. Yeah. He's got three engineers there backing up, just, just ready to rumble here. Let's see how it goes. Now, has he been able to... Uh, I think he really should have been uh, salvaging the wrecks down at the lower left there. He probably could have got another 50 or 60, maybe 100 munitions out of those. I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but he could have got a good chunk of munitions to be able to use more rocket artilleries or what have you. Definitely. I swear to God. Uh, allies are at the pop cap, actually, it looks like. So he can't he afford might be able to, to counter it if he's he's at pop cap. Yep, allies at pop cap. Uh, I'm not no, sure why not he's anymore. running away from his bunker since he can reinforce there. What is what is he doing with those Shermans just sitting him there, lining him up nicely for a rocket artillery? Here comes, ladies and gentlemen. Is he going to be able to get him out in time? Ouch! Massive amount of damage. There's your there's your pathing problem right there, ladies and gentlemen. Main gun destroyed. <laughs> Here comes the cavalry in the form of a Panzer Shrek. Boom, engine destroyed, out of control. The other two, he could probably get another one here if he can get close enough. Wow. Here it comes. Ouch, rear armor. Is he going to get another shot off? Is that Sherman going to get away in time? Wow. Wow. I hope he's salvaging that wreck, though. <laughs> oh, uh, man. I didn't think that was going to be possible, but uh, Germans are seizing territory. crucially enough, he, the two Shermans escaped with very little health, and that that's, that might be the determining, the determining factor in, in this game. Uh, now he's finally taken an you know, aggressive stance and cutting Oh, off oh, he has that many tanks. Maybe I should have done something about that. Oh, no, he didn't finish decapping it. Oh, the micro, the terrible, terrible micro. Enemy unit Unless he was just using it to lure him in or something. I don't know. So we've got about uh, 29 victory points to 276, so that's still been in lockdown. Alright, we've got the 
strat point finally finally decapped. Are you happy now, Vittensby? I'm happy now. Yeah, it's about 20 minutes too late, but I'm happy now. Because I don't think he would have been able to get all those Shermans in. Oh, no. Um, no way. No. He wouldn't have been able to get all those Shermans. He wouldn't have been able to afford that howitzer barrage as much that, that dropped on the 88. I mean, it would have completely changed it if he'd been able to decap that strat point and hold it for any cons consecutive period of time. Yep. It would have been probably a more infantry war ba uh, infantry based uh, game had that happened. Uh, because German Supreme, after the not the, this last battle, but really the big battle before that, had no infantry left, and he's still struggling with that. Spending, I mean, he has Jesus, how many squads of one, two, three squads of Ingies, It looks like repairing the uh, repairing that Sherman, and that's gonna fill it back up on uh, gas and fix all its little holes. <laughs> from the 75,000 Panzer Shreks that hit it and, and the rocket artillery full on rocket bro <laughs> the machine guns gonna like oh, I'm gonna set up there's a Sherman over there ah kaboosh goodbye night have a good night we'll see you on the other side the Sherman's gonna run over your corpse look at that they're very nice people the Germans, <laughs> the Germans are very nice people we don't care we're gonna run over them with a the tank so here we go uh, <laughs> valiantly the Knights cross holders charge the Sherman with no anti-tank weaponry and decide you know what maybe we'll leave this to the pro you know eh, we're valiant we have you know the Knights oh no a wasted registered yeah, wasted. I think he backed out of there yeah it happens. You gotta wait for the time when the tanks are like spinning in circles because they can't figure out which way to go. When, yeah. when, you know, when George is in there going, which way did he go? Which way did he go? Alright, so. Yep. So, well, he, he's got a sucker punch off the first time, but wasn't able to capitalize on that. Um, I wonder if he's gonna try to siege his base now. Base That'd be interesting. Completely. Oh, wow! We got another pop cap. He's trying to build a Sherman over here, but he's only at 33 pop cap because he lost the entire left side. He's got to retake something, two points, I think, before he can get pop cap back in order to build yeah, that next Sherman. Now we're sieging is, the base with AT guns. Wow. This might have been a critical mistake because um, he doesn't have enough for registered artillery, but at the same time... Um, now he's got enough. He's got to. He's got to be really wary of those NGs on the right. So we'll see how he counters that, because um, they can just travel down the right side. So this is kind of a gamble for Nubian uh, to switch sides this late in the game. But uh, do you why see? Is that do you see a? T why is that AT gun pointed the wrong way? That's bad. Uh, it's because there's oh, it two Shermans coming from behind. The, yeah, but do you see the tank depot having? Finish building a Sherman, but it's not popping it out. Is he at pop cap? He used Probably. to be. He was at 35. Uh, now he's at 42. So he should be within pop cap, or maybe it just still it still needs more for a Sherman. If one of these dies, yeah, we'll I'm see it pop sure. out probably. Uh, it looks like he just lost. Yeah, the Sherman just popped out right now. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's what happened then. It must be a little oh, bit more than. Uh, it must need more than four pop cap. It must be five pop cap. <laughs> Why is he? T are you kidding me? He's really attacking that Sherman with the with the Knight's Cross. He's like, I'll hide under the shreds, then it can't shoot me. What the hell? Yeah, oh no! Too bad those those uh, grenadiers were all retreating instead of just running. But he's got it turned around. Gets hit by the AT gun one more time. No, the Sherman gets away with a sliver of health left. And I can't believe he took the right-hand side and got the victory point, but he lost the left in the process. This is crazy close game. Losing ground out there. Nuvian's been on the ropes for so long. And we have a Krieg Barracks coming out. That's a really interesting choice to... to uh, I'm sorry. We had another Krieg Barracks come out uh, to build those AT guns. That's kind of an interesting choice, but... Since he didn't recap the plus 16 fuel on the right, he wasn't really able to afford any more tanks. But I'm sure he would have liked each one of those. Uh, you know, what if each one of those AT guns were actually Panzer IVs? Might have been a little bit of a better investment, considering all you're going to have to deal with is really, really Shermans and unupgun Shermans too. Unupgun Shermans. Yeah, and if nope. they were upgunned, I mean, you got Panzer Shreks to to back it up. So. Panzer IV is veterancy he could have had, but he didn't have that option because he never capped the uh, the plus sixteen. 
Wow! Again, that AT gun set up directly backwards. That was really weird. <laughs> he took it over and it got one shotted. Oh, he took it uh, over. Is that what happened? Yeah. I didn't see that. Let's see. The Bazooka Horde versus. Uh, that's German. Come on, don't get out of there. Yeah, it's gone. Damage your engine. Fire! Even as it gets double veterancy. Destroyed there it goes. engine. Come out on, 5% control. for the win? No. <laughs> I'm gonna try and let you catch up here. There we go. We've got riflemen on the field. Oh, here I thought they were outclassed, outdated, you know, obsolete. But three victory points in the realm of Nuvian means he is chugging down. 110 is like nothing. It's going to disappear here in the next three minutes or so, and we're going to be at a tie score very soon. Is he going to be able to take back enough victory points to really push this game? Let's find out. He doesn't have enough uh, munitions for... And he's got bars, artillery. so that's really going to help him. That's what he's been missing a whole chunk of this game to go with those Shermans was bars and suppression fire. Yep. Wow, this is going to be a last minute turnaround from the last minute turnaround. Yeah, so <laughs> it could be. <laughs> but uh, he doesn't have enough reg for registered artillery, um, so he cannot stop those EGs from decapping. And now that the bar... What's uh, Jeremy's Supreme's munitions right now? He's at nine. He must have just used it. Because um, he's got nothing for munitions. Knight's Cross for the win. Yeah, Knight's Cross could definitely help out. Oh, I'm missing something. On the right side, Knight's Cross obliterating a rifle squad. That's the counter to bars right there, baby. Knight's Cross. Especially uh, right, Knight's Cross with a level of veterancy. Or two. Or three. But or three. Definitely, yeah. They, they are the, uh, the unkillable of the unkillables. I mean, even at, like, Jack cruddy for health or whatever you want to call it you know you can pop a med pack on them if you want to hold an area and uh, they live forever unfortunately he lost an AT he's gonna lose another AT here Knights Cross are gone he's got nothing to hold the right side it's falling ladies and gentlemen the right side is falling I don't think Nubian has anything that's gonna be able to retake this he's got nothing he's got a couple of squads of grenadiers that are retreating he's got one more at the base this looks like it might be it we're going to see now uh, German Supreme push forward. He's taken the left-hand victory point as well. That's going to be doom. I mean, if he had only been taking the right, then it might have had a chance. But he's taking the left, too. That's going to drop these victory points down in no time. Yeah, this is unfortunate. I mean, Nubian definitely played played really well this game to be able to hold off German Supreme for this long. Um, it's just the onslaught was... He didn't have an MG on the much. right to cover those yeah. uh, barred well, he, riflemen. Even with fire up, um, probably would have taken care of that. Uh, plus with all the Shermans, but definitely an MG wouldn't have been a bad investment. It's just so funny to see Volks run around with with bazookas half the Yeah, <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> You should be able to have like a, you know, oh, I got these bazookas. Well, I should be able to pay like 25 munitions or something after you pick it up to upgrade it. <laughs> you don't want to use that crap. Yeah. Like the, the the Germans are now doing like a uh, exchange program with uh, with the bazookas for Panzer Shreks or something. But, uh, that'd be an interesting feature. Yeah, they're they're valiantly trying to hold off this attack on the right, and they've been able to do it. it, it the victory point hasn't switched over. But the left-hand side has been taken. We got five left. It's going to be over any second now. Very, very good game for both sides. Ouch! And how's that for a finishing move? A single grenade from the rifleman obliterates every squad that was left on the field. Save one. The last member of the German society. He'll be the, uh, the new Fuhrer because the rest of the German army was just defeated. That was crazy. Look at all that anti-tank weaponry on the ground. Wow. Yep. That and it only painful. took a good five and a half hours to replenish <laughs> yeah, it only this took week, a good guys. So uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoy hours. it because... Uh, Problems about yeah. All right. So uh, absolutely great game. What do you think uh, the Allied player could have done better to end this sooner? What do you think? Definitely Sherman spamming. I think he might have switched over to tanks a little bit. Not too early, but definitely at the end, uh, he had really no capping power. Um, other than that, maybe I earlier he, bars when he saw I think that was actually a result. Two. 
that was, the, the no capping power was a result of Nubians sacrificing his two uh, his two Oswins, Oswins to kill the two Ranger squads. That really hurt him, uh, German Supreme. And picking up his bazookas, I think maybe at times would have helped that because, I mean, there was at one point I think a Volk squad that had either one or two, and then I know the other squad definitely had two bazookas, and that's just you know free anti tank. Um, Plus, they're not that bad against, you know, infantry. Even though they got a, got a nerf. Hell, I was able to take out the, uh, couple couple Shermans there at, towards the end. But, uh, I mean, the biggest mistake that he did was, you know, the tank pathing thing, where he didn't individually micro his, yeah. his Shermans and the rocket artillery. Um, other than that, uh, mortar usage was pretty pretty good. Um, he switched over to weapon support center really really early. Um, maybe give it a little bit of, of a go, a little bit more of a go with riflemen. Um, I guess he was trying to play it a little bit more aggressive, so mixing in a mortar or two and then trying to, you know, dislodge the axis position on the left side of Angleville. Yeah. Me personally, after running into hordes of MGs and MP40 Volks with like seven squads of bars, I just don't even want to switch sides. When I get the rest si- le- the right side, I'm like just. Just come on, bring it to me, baby. Right. But, I mean, uh, I wouldn't even see that many if we saw any MP40 Volks. I mean, he switched right over to Grenadiers as soon as he got to uh, the Kriegsbarracks level, and he did nothing but build Grenadiers and Panzer uh, Panzer Shreks. And I think that might have been a mistake. I mean, certainly he needed the Panzer Shreks for the anti tank. I think he could have sacrificed one or two of those Panzer Shreks to get an LMG42 instead, because I think that would allow him uh, the kind of extra damage and suppression to stop those. Uh, those hordes of riflemen and rangers that were attacking him. Just an extra little bit of, you know, because, I mean, the LMG does massive amounts of damage to infantry really fast. I mean, it's like a machine gun, so... Uh, <laughs> it's like a machine gun. So, I mean, it just... It That's seems why to be they that call it been. the LMG, yeah, I like know, I know. machine gun. <laughs> so it would have been, I think, very useful. I think the other thing that uh, certainly could have helped is, you know, just building one pioneer and sending him off to, you know, decap the strap point and to cap that plus 16 fuel because for the longest time he was doing nothing with all his squads. Everything he had was devoted to holding that front line in the north. And if he had just had, you know, 120 manpower's worth to, to set aside in order to cap that 16, in order to decap the strap point and harass his opponent a little bit, take back other parts of the map, maybe then he would have had some resources and he would have uh, forced, you know, forced his opponent to take a lot longer to get that many Shermans and uh, he would have had a better, better chance against him later. So, you know, there's uh, certainly tw- hindsight being 2020. We can say all we want, uh, but that was a fantastic game played by both sides. Definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, Nuvion wasn't aggressive enough at times. Um, of course, that was pretty obvious to us because I was watching without the fog of war on. And, you know, I knew he had nothing by the by the strat point the, for at least 15 minutes of the game. and He could have just snuck over there. But uh, it's understandable, especially the situation that he was in. But I do, I would say at the very, very end, moving those AT guns to the left side and completely abandoning the right side, which is all he needed to win, uh, more or less was kind of a maybe not so great of a, of a move. But I think he could have definitely observation posted one of at, at, at a certain point in the game when he had the right hand side locked down. Maybe observation posted one of the. Um, one of the high munitions points just for that little extra income and uh gotten maybe gotten uh i don't know an extra for for the fatherland usage and uh maybe built instead of that flak built a bunker but knowing how many tanks were there i i think the flak was fine maybe moved its positioning back a little bit considering it had a it has a lot of range but i can understand he might have wanted to convert that into a into a into a siege but you know as i always say veterancy would have helped too maybe uh, securing that fuel and getting a couple couple Panzer IVs uh, at the end there. I wouldn't have said a Panther, but definitely a couple Panzer IVs wouldn't have been a bad choice. Um, so yeah, that, that's my final thoughts. Alright, so that makes it the end of the show here, ladies and gentlemen. Tales of Heroes video replay review number 35, German Supreme versus Nuvian. So definitely check out the website tales.tsn central. Tales.tsncentral.com, T A L E S.tsncentral.com. Also, send your uh, send your questions, comments, feedback, and so on and so forth, as well as your uh, interesting games and matches uh, in replays to Tales of at Gamefire.com. That's right, Tales of 
at gamefire.com. Tales of T A L E S O F at G A M F I R E. Dot com. We appreciate everything you guys send to us. We read every single post that gets sent, everything, every single email, every single post that goes on the website. We just don't have time to respond to everything. So we appreciate all the feedback that we get. Everybody who sends in video replay reviews, I mean, wish we could get to everybody's, uh, but we definitely appreciate it all. So thanks, everybody, for that. And also, uh, the website, you may have noticed, was having a little trouble this week. We were in the process of moving it, and uh, there was just a little bit of complications in the process of moving it. should be fixed by the time you hear this. And don't forget to check out this week's audio show. Interview with Noah Stacy from Relic, an artist over there. Very interesting, cool stuff about Company of Heroes and design and just cool stuff in general. So check it out. Tales of Heroes, number 35, is over. And, and when I said G A M F I R E, I, I meant I meant G A M E F I R E fire gamefire.com. That that's what I meant. Yeah, you know, that's what I meant.